Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today's a special episode because it's the first in a new series on the channel where I'm going to be going and visiting other people's workshops. I think there's a lot of value for you, the viewer, in seeing how smaller woodworking operations have come about, the type of space they're working in, uh, the tools that they're using, and how they're perceiving their business. Um, in their space. Some of these will just be people who are doing woodworking part-time and selling their product and others are you know people who have started a full business behind it but maybe are still even just working out of their home shop. So I feel like there's a lot of value here for for my viewers and I'd like to go explore it. Today we're going to go visit Steve Morris at the Morris Collective. He has a one car garage shop that also has other uses in it so he has a limited space. He has a full-time job and a family, so his word working is a passion that's on the side, but he's turned that passion into a side hustle where he's now selling his products and making a good amount of money that's then buying him new nice equipment for use in that space. So let's go visit Steve today at the Morris Collective, today on Bittnerville. Alright guys, we're here at the Morris Collective with Steve Morris. How's it going? Steve is actually an old friend of mine. We went to high school together and college together. And then crazy enough, Steve started woodworking on his own too. And so I reached out to Steve, said, hey, I want to come and check out your shop over here. He has a one-car garage. And Steve has a full-time job. He's treating his woodworking as a side hustle. And so we're going to get into all that. So let's go ahead and start by checking out his shop. So welcome to my one car garage. As I said before, this is a one car garage for a family. So we have to keep some certain things in store and for storage. So up top, we have long bags and long term storage. So over here, we have my custom workbench. Uh, this is the first thing that I built actually when we moved into the garage. And obviously all my tools are right here. My uh, tool chest that holds all kinds of things from drill bits to um, uh, routers, everything like that is in here. Um, but yeah, and, and some hobby stuff of uh, personal needs. Uh, over here, this is actually the first thing that I ever built in the garage, which is a charging workstation. Um, if you have a household and you're doing all kinds of things and you have batteries, well, you need a place to charge it. I wanted something easy that my wife could use and access accessibility wise. So um, that's it. Um, other than that, we have some uh, lawn care stuff and storage and uh, sandpaper holder. And this is where the woodworking starts. So uh, down here, you'll see I have two vacuums. Uh, this Festool sander and vacuum was, I just recently purchased it from the profits of my woodworking. So it was something that I've been eyeing for a while. And with the money that I made from selling my cutting boards, I was able to afford it. Over here we have my workstation. Uh, it holds all my big tools. So we have my table saw, my miter saw, uh, planer, rigid sander, and also you can pull it out and it's very maneuverable and it has my dust collection on it. Over here we have my uh, band saw. This was um, one of my first purchases uh, last fall when I was really getting into woodworking and I started by making some uh, band saw boxes, but now it's an essential part of my cutting board business where I can resaw wood down to thin strips. And over here we have my Walker Turner jointer. Uh, this was gifted to me from Ethan Feinsod, who is a fine woodworker as well and a good friend. Uh, so thank you, Ethan. And um, this thing has done wonders when I start the milling process of the wood. It also dupes as my hose hanger. So over here I had my wood rack. Um, I used to keep all my wood on the floor, on sticks, Obviously, I used to keep airflow, but I was tripping over the wood while I would work or whenever my family was coming in and out through the garage. So this is a recent addition to the house, um, and it is amazing. Not tripping over lumber is a godsend. All right, so Steve, tell us about how you kind of went from your typical homeowner that's just doing stuff around the house to actually, like, trying to do quality stuff in woodworking. Yeah, of course. So Justin, the first thing I made uh, for friends and family this past Christmas were these bandsaw boxes. Mm -hmm. So um, I made about eight of them for friends and family and it was such a joy and everyone loved them that it was something that I was really proud of and I figured what else can I make? Nice. 
So from there, then you decided, okay, let me try my hand at cutting boards or did you do anything else in between? So I actually decided to make a cutting board for myself. And after that came out, I was like, this is dope. Like it's beautiful and it's something I'm proud of and everyone wanted one. So that's, that's what I was saying in, in my business video, if you guys watched that one, where when you're trying to decide what to do with your business, Build for yourself, build for your own enjoyment. And when you make something that you really have a passion for and you really like and friends and family are really liking, it actually gives you a direction on where you want to go with things. Okay, Steve, so tell me about how you turn the cutting board into your focus for your business. Of course, Justin, uh, this was actually the first cutting board I made for myself. And uh, after seeing some photos, uh, my friends started asking me for cutting boards. They were like, this mm -hmm. is amazing. Can you make me one too? So that's what kicked it off, really. Just friends and family asking me for, you know, some kind of product of a cutting board. Nice. Okay, so you're making them for friends and family. How did you decide to then go to the next step and start putting it out there for people? How did you get your exposure so that other people could find you? Yeah, so um, website. You know, first right away, I was like, it's time to take this to the next level. Uh, I formed an LLC, so I'm a small business and created a website that you can buy my uh, cutting boards when they're you know, ready to sell. Oh, so sweet. So what about like selling on a platform like Etsy or something? Etsy wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at Etsy, I did some research and not to bash them, it's a great company. I buy things from Etsy all the time. But if I put a cutting board on Etsy, right below my cutting board listing would be other cutting boards. And my price point would not really sell very well up there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are price limited with Etsy because you have a heavy competition. Yes. When you're doing it more as a website based, you're more uh, an independent artist that somebody's <laughs> purchasing yeah. your things from. If you, I mean, it's a proper way to put it, right? Yeah. And you know, my quality is different than other people's like, uh, my cost bias and basis, sorry, is, you know, a certain level. Mm -hmm. So Etsy just wasn't uh, strategic for me to do. Gotcha. So for my website, I can generate traffic when I need it. When I have product to sell, I push my website and you know, it takes time to build cutting boards, so mm -hmm. I sell out a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> this is a side hustle for you. Yeah. This isn't your all-day, everyday thing. Yeah. This was a way for you to, you know, do something that you're enjoying, but then also start making some money on it that buys you nice things like that Vestal Sander over there, Correct. right? Yeah, so. I, I still have a 9-to-5 job. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's coming out here making... And there's so many people that are watching this that are like, hey... I enjoy my woodworking. I want to make some extra money. How do I take that jump? So that's one of the reasons why I'm going out and, you know, talking to other people here like Steve, mm -hmm. just to see like, while he's still a very small operation, you know, this might be something that relates over directly to you where you are right now. Yeah. And you can easily ramp up. You start with one or two things and then you take it to the next level when you are comfortable, mm -hmm. ready, and your profit margins are, are there. Great. So if you had to guess what is... Are you going to just do cutting boards forever or are you know, you're going to expand out there and, and start adding something else? Yeah, I, in, in the future I will expand. Um, I probably will go back to bandsaw boxes for a hot minute because they are requested often. Um, but I do have plans to start building fine furniture, tables, chairs. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see where it goes. You know, charcuterie boards are right around the corner. <laughs> there you go, yep. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're, we're, again, nine to five job. Family, child you know, husband, I still have to take care of the priorities. Yeah. So this is very much a nights and weekends gig, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Okay, Steve, so you've made one of these fine boards. Tell us how long it actually took you to make this product. So um, we'll say that I do them in batches. Mm -hmm. So for four boards, we're looking at around 16 hours of actual working time. That's yeah. a lot of time. That's a lot of time. So that comes out to be about four hours a board if yep. we broke it out that way. Now, could you do even a higher volume in your batch that would bring that time down? It would, it would definitely help. But, it, you know, it would make each process longer, you mm -hmm. know? And I only have so many hours in a day or a weekend or a night. 
And then yeah, that's, they're right. they're that's right. also like more money investing in product Correct. in order at one time in order to be able to make it. And then you also have to be able to store all that extra product. In that's correct. <laughs> so you're running at a rate that's comfortable for you um, being that you're doing this part time. That's right. Okay. So, um, so we're looking at about four hours on the board. Why don't you show us uh, how you finish one of these boards? Yeah, right sure. Uh, so we use uh, food grain mineral oil. Uh, and that's going to be coated on the boards uh, four times over a two-day period. That mm -hmm. lets all the natural oils go into the board, and it's food safe, obviously, because it's a cutting board. Um, once that is done, and I buff it down, I then apply a beeswax mineral oil combo into it. Mm -hmm. And that gives the pores and the, the grain of the wood more protection. So, uh, and it keeps the board looking beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So... All said and done, when you're committing this massive amount of time to these boards, and then for whatever you're selling them for, do you feel that you're hitting a point where you're happy with the returns on your labor on this? Product? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. Yep. You know? That's the biggest thing. If you're going to get into something like this, it's a side hustle. you got to enjoy what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's times when I can just put on some headphones and listen to some music while I'm woodworking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's kind of like me time. Uh, but I try not to, obviously, uh, neglect my friends and family. <laughs> yes, yes. That's super important, too. Yeah. So, okay, so that's that's one thing that I wanted to point out. As we go through all these different shops and we're looking at different businesses that these people are doing, um, you know, the main thing is like, okay, are you actually making money at your business? Yes. And then do you feel you're being compensated enough for the time that you're putting in? And are you still enjoying it? And, you know, Steve said yes. So that's an important, that's the, that's the most important thing yeah. for when you're looking at doing your side hustle that, you know, you're making the money from it. It's not a waste of your time and you're still having fun with it. Absolutely. All right, Steve, thanks so much for showing me the shop, showing us, you know, your processes with making your cutting boards. Kind of to end it off, what is your favorite tool in the shop and what is the thing that you really want to buy next? Um, you know, like your dream next product that you're going to be able to fit in here. Yeah, of course. Uh, right now, it's, it's my bandsaw. Uh, it's a quality item. Uh, I got it dialed in. It runs true. It cuts like butter. Um, and I use it on every job. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely my favorite tool. Um, what I'm looking for next in the future, uh, a drum sander. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's my list too right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're friends. So um, <laughs> yeah, if, if I get a drum sander, I can do more fine detail woodworking, uh, cut things thinner and sand them down. It's going to shorten your yeah. process yeah. on what you're doing. Speed things up. Instead of you having to sit here doing this, it's sit here and do this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll make things go a little faster. It'll be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some, you know, interesting content and seeing Steve set up here. I know you get bored just seeing my location all the time. So I'm going to be traveling around to a lot of different places, um, even some that are a little bit outside of woodworking, but, you know, in the same realm just so you can see how people are running their businesses and setting up their spaces for what they're doing. Uh, I hope you'll like and subscribe. Of course, you know, we're a newer channel, so that's what helps me grow. And stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next video.